Well, coming up on today's show, a big VW and Ford announcement. They're getting together for a love fest, and what comes out of it could be some lovely electric car babies. I don't know where I'm going with this. Also on the news today, China had a million seller 2018. I know, huge news. Nissan's Infinity brand unveil a new EV that promptly breaks down. And a bit of an announcement from me at the end of the show on the future of this podcast. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It is Tuesday, the 15th of January. My name is Martin Lee and I've been through every EV story I can find today. And I've picked out the best ones I think you need to know about. As always, thank you to the team at myev.com. Myev.com and I have been working together about, uh, it must be near six months now. And over that time, I've seen them build out as the, the world's first marketplace to buy and sell and learn about electric vehicles as well. And it's totally free to use, whether you're buying or selling. It really simplifies the process, and you'll learn about EVs along the way as well. Thank you to the latest member of the Patreon family. That's you, Robert. Well, Robert Grace joined up as a new producer this morning. And thank you so much, Robert, for being part of the family. I've got another name to read out tomorrow, but it's a special one as well. It's someone that I know, uh, but I need to check how he wants his name said. That sounds weird. All will be clear tomorrow. I've talked a lot about Tesla lately, and I want to redress the balance a little bit by talking about VW first. We will get on to Tesla at the end of the show today, though. We're talking boats once again. I know. Well, first of all, Volkswagen's CEO, Dr. Herbert Diess, and the Ford CEO, Jim Hackett, confirmed the two companies will develop commercial vans and medium-sized pickups for global markets beginning as early as 2022. This new alliance, this love fest between the two companies, is going to drive significant scale and efficiencies. That's why they're doing it, and enable both companies to share the investments on vehicle architectures. Ford and Volkswagen both have strong commercial van and pickup businesses. Uh, Popular names like the Ford Transit and Ranger, the Volkswagen Transporter and Caddy. Their collective light commercial vehicle volumes last year, about 1.2 million units globally. And that would represent the industry's highest volume collab as production scales. Well, through the alliance, Ford is going to engineer and build the pickups for both companies. Ford's going to build the VWs, uh, which will be on in the market in 2022. Ford will engineer and build larger vans for Europe, and Volkswagen will develop and build a city van. According to Autoblog, the expanding alliance highlights the growing pressure on global automakers to manage the costs of EVs and self-driving vehicles as well, and the technology required to meet tougher emissions standards. They're still expecting to sell millions of fossil engines, and they probably will do for a short period of time as more people uh, love EVs. Those sales are just going to drop off a cliff. But the framework of the alliance is expected to include the pooling of resources. Now, this is the big thing that I speculated before. I mean, it was it was like shooting at an open goal, really, because it was kind of obvious. Sources say the alliance means that Ford will license Volkswagen's EV platform, which means they don't have to develop their own. Ford have very little to show for in terms of a pure EV platform. When I say very little, I mean nothing publicly to show. Of course, they've had compliance cars and... VW are a long way ahead of most other car makers, actually, apart from perhaps their German peers, BMW and Daimler. And so Ford, in one move with this alliance, now no one's taking ownership of it as part of the company, by the way, there's no equity here, uh, but it does mean that Ford get access and license from VW, it's a moneymaker for VW, the MEB platform upon which all of Ford's electric cars will be built. That's huge news. And staying with VW, they're also going to forge ahead with making EVs in America. In North America, the Chattanooga plant, Chattanooga, Chattanooga, the Chattanooga plant in Tennessee will produce vehicles based on the MEB platform. A new generation of electric cars is coming, and VW have confirmed they will pour $800 million into the plant. It's going to create a 1,000 jobs directly, and of course, as you work your way down the supply chain, many more. The first electric car from Chattanooga is going to roll off the line, not next year, not the year after, 2022. 
takes a while to build these plants, right? Over the next few years, eight MEB plants will be developed in Europe, North America and China. Volkswagen is building up the production capacity needed to sell a million EVs a year by 2025. The first electric car to roll off the line in Tennessee is going to be the ID Cross. That is the SUV model. And then they'll offer the ID Buzz. Now, the Buzz is the reinterpretation of the classic VW camper van or camper bus. And talking about three years to get a plant up and running, I'm sure they'll be looking at Tesla's Chinese endeavours. And there they're talking, not years, months to get things done. Interesting the speed at which things can move, right? Well, I've mentioned China. Let me bring this story further up the order than I was going to do. But let me mention China now. According to data released by the China Passenger Car Association, uh, they had an incredible December. A record high of almost 160,000 EVs sold there, leaping 62% year on year. Uh, From the January to December, though, for the year last year, they did it. China smashed a million, one million and 16,000 new energy electric vehicles, uh, passenger vehicles were sold in the world's largest automotive market. Year on year growth of 83%. How sustainable is that going forward? I'm not putting any negative slight on this, by the way. It's incredible news. According to Gascu for InsideEVs.com, as of December, uh, well, as for it, the big makers... The models of the BAIC EU, uh, the EU series, took the top spot uh, ahead of the runner up, which is the EC series from BAIC. That's their collaboration with uh, BAIC BJ EV. And I like to think that if I was going to launch a, an electric vehicle company, at least on the short list of names would have been BJ EV. Uh, its uh, sales uh, were incredible once again in December. BYD was up there. That stands for Build Your Dreams. Also up there was the BYD E5 and the BYD Tang. If none of these names mean too much to you, it's it's okay. I mean, a lot of people don't have a, a firm grasp, me included, of the Chinese market. I kind of know it superficially, but it's just amazing, isn't it? A million EVs sold last year. Well, from China to Spain, the other end of the scale, Spain's a country that is lagging with EVs. Mark Kane at InsideEVs.com has been crunching the numbers. They got to almost a 1% market share across the year, but in December it was 2%. So you can see how sales are going up. Spain's got some really strong EV sales numbers as the year goes on. Uh, What are the cars? Uh, Well, but if you look at the raw numbers, I say that. Look at the raw numbers, 2,256 in the month. So, you know, you go from a million across the year in China and 160,000 in the month to 2,000 in Spain. Market share was up to 2.3%. And what are the cars the Spanish are buying? Well, in Spain, they love the French Renault Clio. uh, Sorry, Zoe. Renault Zoe, based on the Renault Clio. So it's a a big enough city car. Not one of those tiny, super small cars, but the Renault Clio is a a big enough platform. On that, they built the Renault Zoe. Uh, It's a good enough sized car for getting around towns and cities. Then, in second place, was the Leaf. In third place, the Mitsubishi Outlander. The scourge of my recent visits to rapid chargers. Ah, don't get me started. I love you, Outlander drivers. I love you. Uh, Talking about Nissan and their Infinity brand is their luxury premium brand, if you like. And they turned up at the North American International Auto Show today with their Infinity brand. And after yesterday unveiling a new Nissan concept, today it was an Infinity concept called the QX Inspiration. A a future production car, they say. All electric, SUV. Typical styling of of some crazy electric car ideas. Uh, The brand's new design language, they say. Uh, I'm not massively fan of concept, uh, massive fan of concept cars because they often never get made. Uh, Anthony Carr from Motor One has the story on that, but it isn't all going smoothly. A technical issue ruined the plan. The Infinity QX Inspiration concept came out. Uh, through the two doors and then broke down before lurching forward and stopping again lurching forward again before finally breaking down for good they weren't uh, uh, even able to roll it onto the stage for the big unveiling Uh, the folks at the detroit free press were there to capture it all for twitter i'll put a link of course in the show notes to so you can see the car breaking down i mean we uh, uh we love them but it's kind of funny to watch after i'm just like it's probably not funny for the people that devoted sleepless nights weeks months of their life to make a car and it (laughs) it breaks down 
kind of funny. No, it's not. GM appears to be serious about their zero emissions future. Maybe not the cars they've got on sale at the moment because they're taking the Volt out of production and the, the Bolt could do with a bit more love. But Bolt owners do say they do love their cars. But as for the words they're saying, well, GM is going to shift a huge amount of engineers, 75% of its powertrain engineers from the internal combustion team to the EV team. And you can't just say these things and not do them. So it looks like it is happening and it's a big move. And as I mentioned before on the podcast, it's going to be the Cadillac brand, which is electrified. According to an Axios report in a meeting with investors, their next generation EVs, 20 of which they want to have on the market by 2023, are going to be based on their own new EV architecture. Uh, The Cadillacs will mostly be EVs. And that's kind of where, if I can just chip in with my opinion, it's kind of where it's a little disappointing. I would love the Cadillac brand to be pure electric. You've got Mercedes doing that. You know, on the side of Lewis Hamilton's Formula One car, you'll see EQ Power. And then you go to buy a new Mercedes EV and it'll say EQC. And, you know, I can imagine an EQA and an EQB at some point uh, to match the A class, the B class, all those kind of things. And even with Volkswagen, they've got the ID range, making it clear for their customers. And I just think it's, frustrating that with Cadillac you should just you know it's it's a kind of tarnished brand just go you know what it's going to be an all EV brand and that's how we're going to go forward with it and I think people would get that a couple more stories Samsung SDI is going to introduce its latest lineup of batteries for EVs and hybrid cars at the auto show in Detroit Samsung SDI is presenting its fast charging and high capacity batteries for EVs and plug-in hybrids Uh, they've called it the charged for auto 2.0 And they're doing it at the auto show to raise awareness of next generation battery technology, how important it is. It's the thing that is holding back EVs being made in bigger numbers. And I'm not sure at the moment what is constraining the Tesla Model 3, whether they are. I don't think that the constraints at the moment on the Model 3, the last I can kind of ascertain, if you like, from the the report, I don't think it's the Gigafactory is the limiting factor on the Model 3 production line. But it certainly is for other automakers. They can't get enough of the batteries to put in the cars. It's what's holding everything up. So Samsung unveiling their new lineup. And finally, another battery story I wanted to bring you today because Tesla get a lot of big headlines for their batteries lasting a long time. However, uh, if you uh, look at the smart cars uh, which were made, uh, the Smart 4.2 electric car has some pretty good battery health Uh, 125,000 miles in fact is uh, one particular car that this reader of insideevs.com submitted his story to the website despite a tiny battery it's doing very well it's got 90 percent of its capacity left its state of health and it's when i say tiny 17.6 kilowatt hour battery so if you've done 125,000 miles with that battery, that's done some cycles, right? What I mean by cycles is fully charged and then down to below 10%, and then up again, then down again, and it's still at 90% health. That's incredible. Hey, if you got a second, I wouldn't mind making a quick statement about the future of this podcast. It's a bit self-indulgent, but bear with me. Um, we started, I started this podcast 12 months ago to the day. It was the 15th of January 2018 that I sat down to write the very first show. It took me a couple of days to work out how to get it online. Uh, I'm a slow learner. And it's weird that exactly 12 months to the day, I'm finally able to tell you what's going on. Uh, January last year, I thought I'd launch a podcast. Nobody would listen. I'd stop doing it, and I'd have a cool story to tell that I did it. Well, you know, for the first two months, nobody listened. And then it picked up. And then he picked up and I've been doing it daily and constantly, you know, emailing people, emailing organizations, dropping into forums, being active on socials, really promoting it. And it's gone from zero listeners for the first couple of months, which is disheartening when you do a lot of work and you look at the downloads after a day and it says zero. Well, one, because I checked it and uploaded. Uh, Two, what will we do in January? I mean, I think we're tracking for about 100,000 downloads in January, which is small fry for some, but for me, it just blows me away. 100,000 downloads this month. I mean, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Actually, we're tracking at the moment. It's been a crazy start to the year to actually exceed that by a fair amount. The thing that's frustrated me a bit this year, uh, quite a lot of times, is I could never really give this podcast... This channel, this kind of community in a way, my 
full attention because I have a full-time job. Uh, I have bills to pay and commitments and financial commitments and a pension and a, you know, a wife and my family that I've made commitments to. I'm not just going to jack it all in and become some internet thing. But it was a side project that took up all of my attention, and I just couldn't think about anything else. You know, I started as a weekend job working in radio when I was 15. Loved it. Never stopped. It's, it's all I've done for the last 25 years. Turning 40 last year, I realised that I'm a complete one-trick pony. It's all I've done is I've worked in the radio industry all my working life, and I've had the security of a very good, at times, and regular paycheck and a pretty comfortable life. Well... In August last year, I put EV News Daily on Patreon, and again, I just thought one or two people would chip in, and then it would be a nice thing to have done. As you can see, it's now paying its way. The podcast pays its way, and a bit left over for me to do some Facebook advertising and to reinvest, and, and every penny is reinvested in the podcast. I, I take none of it out because I have a, a full-time job. And I also put online, by the way, on Patreon, you can hide. A lot of people hide their subscribers, and they hide the amount. And I don't do either. And I think being transparent and truthfulness, uh, some of the things that will guide successful people on the internet, if you like, over the next few years, because I think there's no, you can't hide anything anymore with, with, with online because you get found out. You can't, you can't be a different person and, uh, and, you know, busk it and hide your support and all that kind of stuff and hope that no one knows how much you're really making in case people assume, hey, it's too much or, hey, it's too little. So... I don't know what people think when they see my Patreon number, but it is what it is, and I'll always leave it online for you to see. Well, thank you very much if you have supported it in any way, a retweet, a like, an email to me, uh, this goal that we have of, of promoting clean air, of sustainable transport, of just driving some really fun cars. And here's where I'm getting to. Uh, before Christmas, uh, about a month before Christmas, I went into work and did the unthinkable. Having spent a long time thinking about it, I held my breath and I quit my job. Pretty stable job that I could have sat in for the next 25 years and put money into the pension and, and, and it would have been okay. But I think there's something bigger and I think we need to leave the planet a better place than we found it or that we're making it at the moment. And I think we can build this podcast into something bigger and more influential and, and you know be a force for good in a way. Maybe it's my midlife crisis. I'm not quite ready or able to tell you what comes next, but I can tell you that I'll carry on doing the podcast every single day. I've got plans to grow it under the wing of another organisation, let's say that. This team have been incredibly supportive of me taking this gamble. They know and they love cars, especially electric ones, and you will be the first to know when I can tell you something. So I am in many ways starting again with a new project, and I am crazy excited about it and in fact so much so I've, I've i've gone the other way with people i'm holding it all in at the moment because if i let it out i'll explode so i'm not coming across to people when i tell them what i'm going to be doing this year as excited as i really am but i just can't i can't even begin to tell you but that's for another day thank you so much for your support your contribution uh, much love from me to you and here is to uh, taking leaps into the unknown here we go well thank you very much to uh, myev.com for supporting the show they have once again given us our question of the week and it is this please email me your answer to this how much should evs reinvent the car and how much should they conform to the norm should they surprise and delight people by looking different crazy styling or should they look and feel like a normal car that just happened to have a battery let me know your thoughts you can email hello at evnewsdaily.com Thank you to 163 patrons of the show, and thank you very much to everyone who's downloaded one of the 357 previous episodes. If you miss, if you're wondering why we're not up to 365, I took a week off last year. That's why. Uh, if you subscribe on whatever podcast platform you like, even YouTube, you get the show first and free and automatically. And you can say hi on the socials by searching EV News Daily. Do have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. <laughs>